So let's go, mind maps. Actually, um, Pin, one of our members, he has uh, been suggesting topics and writing forums, and he requested this topic. He uh, sent me some links to mind map articles. I found one, uh, one of the links he sent was Wikipedia. Uh, and it's an interesting topic. In fact, I already knew about mind maps. Um, I use mind maps myself. Uh, mind maps are great. If you, if you still don't quite understand what they look like, I suggest uh, going to the, uh, use, use the text guide, the learning guide, and go to the bottom and you'll see the learn more section. And there's a link and it says mind map example. Um, if you go to that, you'll get a picture of what a mind map can look like, um, or the general you know, appearance of it. But anyway, um, mind maps are very useful. I use them for writing. Uh, I don't know, some of you may know, my, one, of my three, <laughs> one of my three degrees, my undergraduate degree was in journalism. Uh, so I'm a writer, and I still write freelance. I haven't written, um, haven't written much, actually, the last year since I came to San Francisco. But before San Francisco, I was living in Thailand, and I would write uh, mostly travel articles and uh, send them to different magazines. Anyway, when I needed to make an article, I needed ideas for an article, I often would use a mind map. So I would put my central idea in the middle of the paper. Uh, let's say I'm in Thailand. I want to write about uh, Thai street food. That was one of my articles. So I, I'd write Thai street food. I'd put it in the middle of a piece of paper. I'd write it in the center. And then I'd just start brainstorming, right? I'd just start thinking of random ideas. The first idea that, or the first word or phrase that came into my head, I would write it around. So I'd say Thai street food. I would think uh, Tom Yum. Tom yam is a kind of Thai food. I would write Tom yam on the paper and draw a line connecting those two things, street food and Tom yam. And then next to Tom yam, I would write, um, you know, uh, 50 baht. 50 baht is about, um, I'm sorry, or 10 baht. 10 baht is about 50 cents, so it's very cheap. And then I would write spicy. And then I would write, um, you know, next to my apartment because I'm thinking of a place next to my apartment where I would usually eat. And I would just keep doing that, going, going crazy. We just, that every, whatever popped into my head, I wrote it down. And then the next thing that popped into my head, I wrote it down. And I would connect these with lines. If I, if I got stuck, if ideas stopped coming, then I would just look at the paper. I'd pick one of the words on the paper, and I'd concentrate on it, and I would see what associations, what uh, connections, what thoughts I would have connected to that word. So let's say I'm, I'm doing this and then I stop. I can't think of anything, you know, and I'm like, oh, well, I'd look at the phrase next to my apartment. I imagine the place next to my apartment and suddenly I think noise because it was very noisy and I write down noise. Then I think pollution. Oh, I write down pollution. Then I think, um, you know, plastic seats and I write down plastic seats and then I keep going again. Well, after doing this for about five or ten minutes, I have a whole page full of words and phrases. Some are very directly related to my topic, Thai street food. Some are not. Some are totally unrelated. They seem unrelated. Um, but the, the great thing about this is I would get a lot of interesting details for my article. And I would get some interesting ideas that... If I used a normal technique, a normal organization, like an outline, point one, then A, B, C, point two, A, B, C, that's kind of a very linear, structured, uh, in my opinion, a little bit boring way to organize a paper. It's okay for school papers, I guess, but for something a little more creative, it's not so good. So I would use a mind map instead, and uh, my writing, it would be the first step of my writing. The second thing I would do, I'd look at my mind map, and I would look for interesting ideas, and I would start circling them. For example, pollution was one of the ideas I used, because sitting on the street in Bangkok, eating, well, there's a lot of pollution. So I wanted to write about that. I wanted to give that feeling. What is it like to be sitting in a street in Bangkok eating, or well, next to a street in Bangkok eating food? I wanted to capture some of the feeling, and that includes the pollution, it includes the noise, it includes how the, the, the heat, all those details. And making the mind map first helped me remember some of those details. So I would circle the interesting details, I would circle the interesting ideas. 
Then I would organize those ideas. I would pick the best ones and I would put them in groups. Maybe I would use a color. So everything related to the, uh, uh, the details, like how it, how it looked or felt or sounded. Uh, maybe I might put that in red, circle those with red. And then when I'm talking about the actual food, what food was available, maybe I would circle all the food items in green that I thought about. And maybe when I'm thinking about cost, how much does it cost, and saving money and how cheap it is, maybe I'd put that in blue. So then after I'm finished, I have maybe three or four different colors on the page, and those are my general topics. That's the general uh, topics that I'm going to write about in my article. In fact, I would usually write one or two paragraphs for each color, for each group. So this helped me organize my paper. It helped my uh, article. It helped me think of interesting ideas. It helped me think of interesting details that I wanted to talk about. It was a really great technique for creative writing uh, or for any kind of writing, in fact. I also use um, mind maps uh, when I just need to think of ideas, I'm, maybe I'm stuck. Uh, I'm thinking about ideas for effortless English, for example, and I don't know what to do next. So I just will make a mind map. In the center of the page, I will put effortless English. I write that phrase. Then I just start going, and the first thing I think about, I write down. Uh, maybe I'll think of, uh, you know, internet, and then I'll write internet. And then what's the next thing I think about? Podcast, and I write podcast, and I just keep going. And the point with a mind map is to do it quickly. Do not edit your thoughts. Do not stop and think. You want to keep the ideas coming quickly. You want to write fast. Later, later you can go back, circle the most interesting ideas, or later you can organize them more. So anyway, that's how I use mind maps. So I use mind maps really to generate ideas, I'd say. That's probably uh, the way I use them most. Now, some people uh, in the article talks about you can use mind maps to take notes. You're in a class, uh, the professor, the teacher's lecturing, giving a talk, and uh, you want to write down the main ideas. So in the center, you might write down the, the topic, let's say um, English, uh, learning English. And then he talks about four main points, speaking, reading, writing, you know, etc. Uh, and then you write each of those in a, around uh, the center of learning English, which is the kind of the center idea. And then you write more details coming off of those. So you can use it to take notes. I've never done that myself, but uh, it sounds interesting. I think it's a good idea. Um, you could use that for the mini story. By the way, for any of our uh, lessons, you can take notes if you're not in a car um, driving while you're listening to these lessons. Uh, take some notes. And you can do it with a mind map. I think that would be a good way to do it. For example, you're listening to the mini story lesson. Well, as you listen, you might just write down a, a key word from each sentence. And you just write them and you just connect them to each other. And that might help you remember the whole story. You don't have time. I'm going too fast. You can't write the whole story. But you could write down keywords just to remember the main ideas of the story. And that would help you at the end when I, at the end of the story, I tell you, please stop this. Now try to tell the story yourself. Well, if you've got some notes, if you've got a little mind map to remind you of the vocabulary of the main ideas, that probably would help. I don't know. Try it. Let me know. Write it in the forums. Go to the forums. Try it and tell us, did, did it help or did it not? <laughs> All right. I guess that's it for my commentary. Uh, in general, I think mind maps are a great tool. Uh, I especially think they're a good creativity tool. And uh, I think they could also be good for note taking, as we just mentioned. So give it a try. Try using mind maps when you when you write, when you're writing English, um, instead of you know whoa, doing this painful thing and thinking, thinking, thinking forever and making a boring normal outline. Try to make a mind map first instead. It might help you start writing more quickly and more easily. And when you take notes, if you take notes when you listen to these lessons, use a mind map. Alrighty, and finally, use a mind map and write something in the forums. Please use the forums! Alright, see you next time. Bye-bye.